Welcome to the Cybersecurity Competition Federation Show. I'm Dan Manson. I teach computer information systems at Cal Poly Pomona and serve as principal investigator for a National Science Foundation grant to help form an umbrella organization over cybersecurity competitions. The Cybersecurity Competition Federation can support the development of skill at a large scale by bringing cybersecurity competitions under an umbrella organization, which will help players of all ages and skill levels identify a point of entry into a continuum of cybersecurity competition experiences. With a focus on communication and promotion, the CCF maintains the autonomy of competition creators, supports their business models, and does not interfere with their sponsorship or funding sources. This week, we expand the view of traditional cybersecurity competitions. According to the Entertainment Software Association, in 2014, 59% of Americans played video games. 52% of gamers are male, 48% are female. 62% of gamers play with others online or in person, and 77% of gamers play with others at least once a week. Vector 35 is combining the best of gaming and capture the flag competitions. I talked recently with Jordan Wines and Rusty Wagner of Vector 35 to discuss the future of learning in-depth cybersecurity concepts through competitive gaming. Uh, Vector 35 is an experiment that we hope will succeed <laughs> because it is our livelihood. Uh, we're interested in making uh, kind of a new thing that hasn't really existed before. So we like to say we're at the intersection of gaming and capture the flag. So security CTF hacking competition uh, combined with uh, gaming, traditional game elements. The, the whole point of the game is that if you're not hacking, you're not trying. You know, you actually have to solve CTF challenges, the kind of usual puzzles you see in a CTF challenge, whether it's sort of network protocol analysis or reverse engineering or vulnerability research techniques, kind of all these different challenges are worked into the game, but that's how you have to act, solve, solve challenges. Um, can you walk us through a, a typical challenge in the game and how someone would work their way through the challenge? So there was actually one that was a, it was a fire boss yeah. and the boss was quite, quite difficult to beat normally. You would actually basically need 30 players or so and coordinate them properly to actually beat it through raw gaming skill. However, there was a problem with the boss's code in that you could actually individually as one single player, you did the right course of actions. You could beat him single-handedly and you had to discover an actual software flaw which was an integer overflow vulnerability which is a real world bug that happens in real world software and you could actually overflow his health and beat him that way so you really had the resources to develop these games as much as you wanted to do it would we ever get to the point where it can um, be shown to the public like an esport where you could have a a real gaming competition in in this way where they're demonstrating their skills in reverse engineering and the uh, the cybersecurity skills but you're showing it like a like an esport that's absolutely part of the vision uh, the goal is to make it as engaging and accessible too which is the biggest problem that you have right now it's very difficult to show what's going on inside of a ctf player's head it's very difficult to show what's going on in their computers. Everyone's got their own tools, their own processes that they're going about doing it. Sometimes it's just watching somebody scroll and stare at a screen, uh, and that's pretty hard to make engaging. Uh, so I think that we as a community have to figure that out. We've got some, some ideas. We've really been thinking about that for a while, and I think there's some advantages having it in a game provides. We can get access into the tools you're using because we can provide them the tools in the game. And so we can, we can show what progress is being made. We can tell how far different teams are you know, to a greater extent than you can in other things. But I think that's a necessary prerequisite to making this a global you know, enterprise, to making it something that's appealing, you know, have mass appeal. You have to make it easier to understand and you have to make it exciting and engaging to people who aren't yet into it. You know, people watch a, a football game and even if they don't really know the, the rules of it, you pick up on it, you learn at it, they can, you know, just drawing arrows on the screen and you learn from the commentators to make it more accessible what's really going on. That's what we need to have happen in CTFs. We are continuing our segment this week called Inside the Game. We 
With me is Jason Pittman. Jason, welcome back. Thanks, Dan. Hey, everybody. Jason, we just saw a clip on the fusion of gaming and hacking. You've taken a look at uh, games over the years, competitive gaming, um, and you're familiar with CTFs. Is, is this kind of like peanut butter and chocolate? It's a natural fit? I think it's like peanut butter and bananas, uh, being a little bit of an Elvis man myself. Uh, it's the perfect synthesis. What is it that you think will attract gamers to capture the flag, to being able to, to hack the game, do reverse engineering, uh, use these tools inside a game that, that really will stretch them in a way that normal gaming never will? Uh, there's multiple variables involved. I'd like to step back and say this. I think Vector 35 has really hit the nail on the head here. They understand that the power of the synthesis is gaming, in essence, is solving puzzles. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole field of study related to puzzles and whether it's a pattern puzzle or a process puzzle, but all games are puzzles. Well, inherently, a cyber competition is filled with puzzles. We call them challenges. So the synthesis of taking the idea of a competition and embedding it in a gaming framework is perfect. I, I think one of the coolest things about gaming is, you know, we've talked about this being a sport and that it's fun to play a sport. Well, for a lot of kids, it's even more fun to do video games. So if this is something that starts being used in computer science courses, starts being used at the high school level, that kids will be able to really start to get into these advanced concepts earlier, like reverse engineering, but they think they're playing a video game. But you know, that's one of the beautiful things about like Pwn Adventure, in, in the beauty of having the game framework as the meta context, is you can embed any kind of challenge you want in it, which is something that, like for instance, with CCDC, it's a great competition, but it's purely a cyber competition because of its nature. And you couldn't turn that into a computer science competition or a first robotics competition. They're not compatible. With, with something like an MMO as the framework, you can put anything you want in there. Now, Pwn Adventure is not the first CTF game. Pico CTF's been going on for a few years now, and they've developed it with scenarios, um, storylines, with really cool graphics. But, but this is taking it uh, several steps further because going down this road, we, we talked in the interview about how we can get to the point where this is going to be a gaming competition that the public is going to want to see. And you know how competitive gaming, what type of viewers it gets. Do you think we can make this type of gaming um, generate an audience as fanatical as um, Dota or some of those other gaming competitions? I think we absolutely can. It, it, it's in gamers' nature to be competitive. For instance, in World of Warcraft, you do quests and you level your character up, you gain power and you do things. How fast people can go from level one to level 10 became a competition. It, and that's just uh, made up by the community. But it's something that is emergent and I think it's something that's very powerful in the competitive spirit. We looked at the statistics on, on gaming and I, I was happily surprised to see it's almost 50-50 between female and male gamers. Now there are different types of games that um, men and women are attracted to, but I, I think that opening up this environment for playing a CTF in a game, you can have diff any type of game you want, so you can have games that are tailored to audiences. You absolutely can, and I think that's something, uh, that's another one of those variables that highlights the beauty of the synthesis between game design and cybersecurity competitions. The game industry, uh, particularly in video games, for a long time has understood how to solve the gender inclusion problem. Cybersecurity competitions really haven't gotten there yet. With this, they have. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Dan. See you, everybody. We will be back next week with a look of how middle school girls are learning cybersecurity and playing Capture the Flag. If you have a competition you would like us to cover in a future show, please contact us at cyberfed.org. I'm Dan Manson, see you next week.